guys, Ryan Lawler, I'm here with TechCrunch TV. We're at CES and I'm um, talking today to uh, Tom Conrad, CTO of Pandora. Um, thanks hey, for being here. <laughs> it's great to be here. Uh, so this is, you were telling me, this is your ninth year, I believe, yeah, being at the, CES? Yeah, the ninth year that Pandora has, has been at CES. Kind of uh, hard to believe we've been at it this long and uh, uh, really interesting to watch the, the changes, both for the company and for the consumer electronics landscape over those years. Okay, so tell me like, what's big for you this year uh, and for Pandora? So um, Pandora, from very early in its history, began to make investments in developing relationships um, with first the consumer electronics uh, universe um, and uh, in the more recent years of the automotive uh, uh, industry. And both of those you know, groups obviously have huge, huge presence here at CES. And, uh, so the big news for us this week is we have our thousandth implementation of Pandora in consumer electronics uh, and uh, and automotive. Um, uh, we, we announced with uh, Chrysler that that Pandora is coming to their UConnect system, mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, that crosses that kind of incredible threshold for us of, of over a thousand. Yeah, I, I find that fascinating, especially the cars. You know, a few years ago, the the cars with the apps like started showing up here and. Uh, that's really uh, amazing, especially for you guys, since it's such a hard market for you to crack, right? Yeah, so we, um, we're really kind of the, one of the early pioneers in, in, in the, uh, the science of connecting the car to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, we did our, uh, started building our first relationships actually here at CES. Um, uh, four years ago, three years ago, we had our first public demonstration of Pandora in um, the Ford product lines, fast forward to 2013, and we're in um, over 85 different models on dealer lots, 20 different major automotive brands have integrated Pandora into the car, more than a million people listening to Pandora um, as they drive through one of these connected systems where um, the entire experience is controlled by the car itself. Right, now you're on a thousand different devices or a thousand implementations. Um, and you're not a huge company. How do you actually do that? How do you, how do you have the R&D? Like, do you do it yourself? Do you work with partners? How much of it uh, is done by Pandora and how much of it is done sort of, you know, by the manufacturers? Sure. Well, with, with you know, a thousand different devices and 175 million users, um, it is kind of incredible to me that there's a team of, it's on the order of 40 software engineers that, that, that support this entire ecosystem. Uh, uh, so if you're a great developer and looking for a job, we'd love to have you come talk to us. <laughs> um, but um, the, uh, we attack that problem using several different techniques. Um, when it comes to the web and to mobile and to tablets, um, all of the Pandora uh, design and development is done um, by the engineers at Pandora in Oakland. Um, and uh, so that's good. That covers you know seven or eight of the thousand different ways to enjoy Pandora today. Um, we tackle the, uh, the consumer electronics opportunity and the automotive opportunity a little bit differently. In consumer electronics, we've developed a, a platform that we license to consumer electronics manufacturers and their engineering organizations develop Pandora clients that we then certify for distribution. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an API, we have a developer center, we have developer support, um, that whole kind of ecosystem developed. Um, uh, and then they ship us uh, their final versions of the products. And we literally get shipped refrigerators and, and <laughs> hundreds of different televisions and Blu-ray players and connected speakers. I mean, our office is just this kind of crazy cacophony of, of every consumer electronics device. Um, it looks like a really poorly organized version of the, of the floor <laughs> at uh, CES behind us. Um, uh, they just test it out. And so we do all the testing and then we provide feedback to them about either user experience things that we'd like to see changed or just functionality and, and, and product quality things. And, we go through a few cycles with them, and then they, they begin to ship to their, uh, to their customers. Um, automotive is, is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the automotive industry is complex um, right. with lots of different kinds of players. There's an entire aftermarket universe that has right, one right. sort of culture. There's the, the big OEMs and their suppliers that is right. an entirely different kind of, yet again, a different kind of um, environment. And so what we've done is we've hired some incredible people out of automotive mm -hmm. um, uh, that come with you know, relationships and knowledge of how that whole universe works to try to explain to this you know, scrappy Silicon Valley company how to behave when it comes to automotive. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, so what we've done is we've, um, we've attacked 
integration with the automotive companies mm -hmm. in a couple of different ways. Uh, one mechanism uses uh, a platform technology we developed called Pandora Link. Okay. That uses your cell phone sure. um, to uh, to communicate with the dash. Um, right, right. That allows the car through voice command or touch or physical controls to tell Pandora what to do. Um, and the application running on your phone, mm -hmm. communicating over this Pandora Link protocol, um, delivers the Pandora experience okay. into the car. Um, and some of it's with OEMs, some of it's with the uh, manufacturers. It uses OEMs, their suppliers, the aftermarket people, many of them use that technique. Um, we have another approach where we actually take the Pandora application core mm -hmm. um, and, and embed it into the OEM's application. So Toyota is a good example of this. They have a, um, an application that you can install on your iPhone and Android device called Entune that Pandora is mm -hmm. actually embedded into. Okay. Um, that's a, a, another way that we tackle this problem. Right, right, and just right, right. really generally we look for, um, we look for a way to collaborate with the, the OEMs that gives a great experience for the consumers and satisfies the kind of the way that the OEM wants to bring these products to market. Right, right, right. So w one of the big problems you've been tackling is just how do you make money off of digital music? It seems like, you know, it's been so hard over all these years and it seems like people are just getting around to actually being able to have profitable businesses yeah. in music distribution. So how do you, I, I mean, how has that changed over sure. the years? Well, it is, an, it is a big part of that nine-year story of right, Pandora. Right. Um, uh, Pandora's uh, business is supported principally through advertising. There's a, uh, a, a segment of our business that's subscription, but really it's, it's you, can, you, know, you can look at our public filings. We're, right, a, right, we're right. an advertising company. And one really interesting thing about the evolution of CES for us is every major CMO is here. Every major ad agency is here. And yeah. so our ad team, um, and the engineering and product organization that supports them are here in Las Vegas this week, we meeting with these people, planning creative campaigns for uh, for the coming year, um, and uh, sort of dreaming about what's possible as we converge this digital world um, with the radio world. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, our mobile footprint is um, among the largest uh, mm -hmm. in the world. We're consistently one of the the top five most installed applications on both Android and iPhone. Last year, our mobile revenues um, exceeded everyone in the industries but Google, right. um, and uh, and so we continue to kind of work with these uh, agencies and CMOs and brands to figure out how to take advantage of this kind of incredible uh, advertising medium known as as mobile. Okay, so nine years in, you coming to the show, is there anything in particular this year that gets you excited? Like, are you going to walk the floor? Do you things that you want to hunt out and, and look for? Sure. It is interesting looking back at, at you know my notes from being here nine years ago. You know I was excited about 1080p TV. This year I'm excited about 4K Ultra okay. HD TV. <laughs> you know nine years ago yeah. I was excited about this pen, five megapixel Pentax camera. There's right. a there's a Canon camera that's uh, called the N series that is like a like a companion for your cell phone mm -hmm. um, that I'm excited to get a look at. So. It does feel to me like we're, you know, even over this long, you know, nine-year period, we're in this kind of, um, you know, iterative cycle where each year we take the things that were, you know, uh, exciting the former year and refine them. So, right. uh, yeah, I'm excited to get over there and see what they have for us. Well, thanks, Tom, for being with us. Uh, thanks for stopping by at CES and being here at the TechCrunch booth. And thanks everybody for watching.